Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, I think it's still too early to, to tell. Um, clearly, the markets have been um, very volatile across many regions. I think um, it's still markets that are watching uh, what's going on in the political landscape around the world and how that um, will shape what uh, the next few years might look like. And I think um, that's still the major concern. So although we've seen you know, the developed markets uh, rally significantly this year, have some good gains in them, um, I think uh, you know, there are issues on valuations in some of them. And I would expect more of a consolidation phase uh, as we get more clarity on some of these uh, geopolitical events that are going to happen in the next few months. All right. Well, speaking of that consolidation phase that you're mentioning, could this also be a technical or technical correction rather that we're seeing after that post-election rally in the U.S.? Um, this is also what BDO's uh, chief market strategist Jonathan Ravelas told Bloomberg earlier that it could be just that, plus the recalibration of expectations, of course. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, there's a lot of gains that have been made in those markets. I think uh, what led the rally. Uh, are the financials and what seems to be leading the sell-off are the financials as well. So it could be some profit-taking going on. Um, that's normal. Uh, that's natural. Um, and so I wouldn't read too much into it. Um, uh, I think, again, focusing on the fundamentals, uh, particularly for our market, uh, that's, that's what we try to do and that's uh, what we're focused on today. No? Philip, uh, JP here. Now, uh, let me shift it back to local markets now. Earnings season is winding up, as we know. And last time you were on the, on the broadcast, you were pretty optimistic for earnings growth here to hit the high single digits. Now, is that growth rate enough to satisfy investors, especially since the PSE is one of the more expensive markets in the region? Yeah, I, you know, first thing we look at is the fourth quarter numbers. And we are very encouraged, actually, by the numbers we saw. I think on average, uh, weighted average, the PSEI components contributed something like 18% earnings growth in Q4. Um, and uh, that, is, that was well within, if not even better than what the market expected. Um, my sense is that if we can deliver anywhere between 10 and 12% earnings growth this year, that will be above expectations and that will be taken positively um, uh, by investors. No? So. Yeah. Um, that's something we're looking forward to seeing. Um, the, the first quarter is a few weeks from, or a week from ending, and uh, we'll see how those numbers pan out. Now, uh, Philip, we're also in, uh, noticing increasing foreign fund outflows. Do these, uh, is this trend concerning you? And if this trend continues, are there any particular sectors here that are ri at risk if foreign fund outflows continue to intensify? Yeah, well, I think as of last Friday, the number is 168 million U.S. dollars in outflows for the year. Um, that is not necessarily a big number, actually. Um, you know, last year, between August and December, we saw probably my estimate would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.5 billion U.S. dollars leave the country, um, you know, in six months. So, you know, this last quarter has uh, been... Uh, relatively muted. Um, we did see a big number last Friday. I think it was minus 18 million U.S. last Friday. Um, so we're watching this carefully. Um, and the key for us is what is going to be the catalyst to reverse this trend of outflows and see the inflows c come back in. And right. we have some ideas about that, but I think, uh, um, you know, that's what we're looking for. All right. Well, certainly you're not the only one looking for that. Philip Markets everywhere, everywhere rather, still looking for that much-needed inertia. You guys call it catalyst. I personally like the word inertia. We have been stuck 7-1 to 7-4. Could the upcoming BSP meeting that's happening tomorrow, that monetary board policy setting meeting, provide that much-needed catalyst for the market to break this range? Uh, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> My sense is uh, the number one most important bill or law that needs to be passed is comprehensive tax reform. That will be the catalyst. That is the future of, of the country, the future of the people. I think relies a lot of the, on this. It's, it's um, allowing for 
uh, equality in terms of uh, the tax base, allowing for wealth to be created at the lower end quicker, uh, and allowing for, more importantly, the spending program to begin because um, we cannot afford to go out and spend significantly if we don't raise the revenue. So, um, in my opinion, that is the most important, single most important uh, event that needs to happen sooner rather than later, and that will be the catalyst uh, for the return of, of foreign investors in a big way into our market. Certainly, Philip, not the first time we have heard that sentiment comprehensive tax reform program that is the much needed catalyst to break us out of this stump that we've been in. Thank you very much, Philip Hagedorn, Investment Director from ATR Asset Management.